Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our fifth Marketing Club webinar of the series, How to Put CSR at the Heart of Your Marketing Strategy, with our guest speaker, Sangeeta Waldron. So the Marketing Club was created primarily to help students get the most from their CIM accredited degree and prepare them for a career in marketing. This webinar is one of a series of online events we've been running this academic year for our Marketing Club. The CIM accredited degree program enables students to gain a professional marketing qualification by taking advantage of the exemptions the accredited degree provides. If you're a student, you can sign up now to receive the Marketing Club newsletter. Simply take a photo of the QR code you see on the screen. Each edition will provide you with content designed to support your studies and actively manage your professional development by keeping you up to date with the latest trends, innovations and concepts in the marketing industry. So I'd now like to hand you over to Sangeeta Waldron of the PR agency Serendipity PR and Media, who's our guest speaker today. Over to you, Sangeeta. Thank you, Judith. Welcome, everyone. I'm really pleased to be here this evening with you. And thank you for joining me at this very timely webinar. Recent global data and research from organizations, very respected organizations, such as the United Nations, Harvard Business Review, including businesses such as KPMG, Ernst & Young, clearly show that corporate social responsibility is incredibly important for all types of businesses and brands, irrespective of sector, whether the business or brand is a startup, established, big or small. Critically, and this is really important, and I hope I get this across this evening with you, is that corporate social responsibility or from now on, I'll call it CSR, is not a trend. It's not a flash in the pan, but it's vital to a company and a brand's longevity. So I can safely say you're all in the right place this evening. So before we begin on the CSR journey, I want to go through some elements with you. And um, I always get a lot of um, sort of lots of kind of feedback and lots of queries about what's the relationship between a phone and a toilet. And um, actually there is um, a connection. And the United Nations in 2013 reported that more people in the world had access to a mobile phone than they did to a toilet. And I think that's quite a shocking statistic. But then how does that fit into the context of marketing? Well, it shows that over half the world's population is now online. And according to statistics uh, published this year in 2022 from Our World in Data, there are 7.7 .7 billion people in the world and 3.5 billion of us are online. So from a marketing perspective, it means digital communications is really driving everything where the three most important elements are affecting us as marketeers and publicists and anyone working in comms because we are need, we need these elements and we're looking at these elements of social listening digital storytelling and real-time marketing we're also in an industry that really demands and involves creative ideas and thoughts and then being able to communicate them via the media, whether it's through TV, magazines, radio and, of course, social media channels such as Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, where the purpose is to raise the profile of an organisation, promote a campaign, promote an initiative, because we all know that good old proverb, awareness drives consideration. And we also know that marketing and PR is for all types of businesses and all types of sectors. And it's about sending the right message to the right people in the right place to build a brand's reputation. It's a dynamic that can actually change the face of a brand and a business. It's important because we know it builds credibility, it enhances online profiles, it drives profits, sales, leads, and fundamentally, it changes the way people think about you, your brand, and your business. And within that, we know that storytelling is a key component in PR and marketing. We know that storytelling creates the brand, and we know everyone loves a story. 
it helps to engage people people listen to to the brand story they engage with the brand it engages with clients consumers and influencers we use storytelling on social media on websites but the key here for corporate social responsibility is authentic storytelling that's fundamental to what we're trying to do with corporate social responsibility and for a long time and i would actually say i'd go back as when i say a long time i would say prior to this pandemic companies and brands did not really understand csr they weren't really sure where csr fitted within an organization uh, it was so misunderstood it was bolted on to human resources so it was put into hr as a good feel factor or it was put into the comms team to drive a campaign but no one really understood or appreciated what csr could really do for a brand and essentially corporate social responsibility is about the ethos and a purpose of the brand it's about a brand's relationship within the within the location it's operating it's about its societal responsibilities it's about the ethics of an organization and crucially and this is really important csr is not a fluffy concept it's a strategic business management concept it enhances reputations of a company it strengthens brands and also here i want to just mention something called esgs you might have heard of esgs which means or stands for environmental societal and governance and esgs came out of csr as a way of measuring a company's impact measuring a company's ethical impact and a lot of people will say now that esgs have replaced csr but in my opinion and from my experience and research i'm going to say something that's probably a little bit shock horror for some of you maybe but i believe esgs and csr are the same thing because if a company or a brand is doing the right thing with regards to csr and csr is authentic and it's effective then it will be easy to assess the impact of a brand you won't need esgs and what's changed what i you know why i believe csr has really become powerful is because of this global pandemic and while we know this pandemic has changed our lives and it's you know for a lot of people it's taken a lot you know it's affected um lives incomes but at the same time the global pandemic has really accelerated corporate social responsibility the pandemic has fundamentally changed how we think behave and consume there's been no rapid return to normal and at this in you know this new world we're now experiencing one of the key terms is trust and during this pandemic when it first started in 2020 consumers were really looking to brands to protect and care collaborate and behave differently and do better than actual governments to um, during this crisis and people's expectations of companies have changed during this pandemic and the pandemic has accelerated corporate social responsibility and at the start um, of 2020 in march um, an organization called edelman brought out a trust barometer special report and it's called the brand trust and the coronavirus pandemic and this report showed that consumers really wanted brands to step up and they wanted brands not just to step up and do better by the planet but also to protect their employees work with governments and direct their resources to help solve the virus problem and then last year another report came out and this is a report i really like to draw on because i think it's a re it's a fantastic uh report and it was done by the xeno group and it's called the strength of purpose 
and it surveyed more than 8,000 people in eight different markets, which are the US, Canada, UK, France, China, India, Singapore, and Malaysia. And what this report found is, and I think this is really fascinating, 76% of consumers were ready to vote with their wallets. So if they thought a brand was not authentic, was not purposeful, was not doing what it said it should, they would go elsewhere and get, you know, and fraternize another brand. And 77% of the consumers from this survey said that a company's leader should embody the purpose and mission of their organization, of their brand in their personal life. And that's really fundamentally changed how brands are now looking at corporate social responsibility. It's a whole different energy about CSR. And while I've quoted these two surveys, there are so many reports coming out nearly every other day, reports, surveys, um, data, showing how important CSR is because it's important because when you get it wrong because we're living in this digital age there is nowhere to hide and when marketing is leading the corporate social responsibility it's not authentic and that actually leads to what we call greenwashing and these days because we're living in this digital era you know digital comms is driving everything um, there is nowhere for brands to hide when they get it wrong. They're called out. And sometimes brands find that they are being cancelled in real time. When brands are operating on a, you know, they're not, they're not doing authentic corporate social responsibility, then it becomes a crisis issue. That's when crisis communications comes into play. So the fundamental bottom line to avoid greenwashing to stop greenwashing is to ensure that CSR leads the marketing in everything not just a one-off campaign but it really sits at the heart of the brand and sits at the heart of the business strategy and that kind of leads on to where we go next is how do you get started uh, and so before you even start your marketing plan it's really to have a whole, I would say, a mindset, a change of mindset, where us as marketeers and us working in this comms sector, we really have to understand what corporate social responsibility is and what are the issues affecting the planet, what needs to be done. Because only then can we have an authentic viewpoint and it means understanding the corporate social responsibility values of the brand you're working with, the business you're working or part of, the organization you're part of. And these corporate social responsibility values are the heart of the brand. They're the core values of the brand. Yet many companies are confused about their own brand identity and values. And I always wonder, if you don't understand your own brand, how can you expect others to know what you do and what you stand for? Many companies now are recognizing the link between successful business and strong branding. And we all know here that branding is not just a logo, but too few realize that successful brands have corporate social responsibility values positioned at the core of their business. And this is the essence of CSR. You know, when I started off, I said, you know, for a long time, companies, brands didn't know where to put CSR. They kind of bolted it on to different things. But really, CSR should be at the driving, at the driving seat in all departments within an agency. Um, and branding, we need to recognize that branding is entwined with CSR values. Define your business for yourself, your team, your customers, and the external audience. Be clear on what your objectives are. And I was reading something earlier today, and it really kind of, this kind of spoke to me. 
in today's modern world and modern business world, the business landscape means past traditional perspectives of success are no longer relevant. You know, for brands and marketeers just to think about the brand in terms of ROI, return on investment, money, pounds, dollars, is not enough. For brands and marketeers who really want to stay relevant, we really need to become aware of the impact of that business on the world. Businesses need a soul. Brands need a soul. Um, brands, business leaders, us as marketeers need to adopt thinking that is centered around sustainable practices for the environment, ethical approaches to our customer relationships. It's so important to have this mind shift, this kind of new thinking. And then how do we do it? So you've got started, you, you understand what your values are. And I always recommend not having more than five values. And that's very simple. Having anything more than five becomes complicated. It's not easy to communicate. People forget what they are. So I always say have not more than five. And remember that these five values are your brand's business commitments. Make them values that you can deliver on and are passionate about and make business sense. And that's critical that they make business sense. There's a growing number of brands now making environmental claims. We need to recognize that underpinning a lot of environmental claims is a complex science. And it, you know, and there's need for detailed evidence, which often looks at a whole life cycle. So you've got to think about the whole value chain when you're creating a marketing campaign. Because whatever you're doing on the campaign affects the business, affects the brand, especially in this digital age. You can't just work on your campaign, believe it's CSR led when other parts of the business are doing different things and they're not aligned, there isn't a holistic approach. So CSR is very much a fundamental mindset and you can't just enter into CSR lightly. You've got to really think about what you're doing. And I've kind of put together some ideas of what CSR values can look like. And, you know, you've probably know a lot, quite a few of them have heard of carbon footprint, fair trade, employee well-being is really key right now. Ethical supply chains. No longer can you say, well, we didn't know what our supplier was doing. That doesn't wash anymore. That's part of greenwashing. But within this within these values there's one that i really want to kind of hone in on and that's diversity and inclusion because diversity and inclusion is very much part of the corporate social responsibility remit it's not a standalone it's integral to csr and having this as a value means that from a marketing marketing perspective mistakes won't be made glaring bad campaigns I don't know if you all remember the Gucci blackface balaclava jumper, which was a huge clangor. When you have the right talent in the room helping work on these campaigns, when you have, when by right talent, I mean you have a diverse and inclusive group of marketeers working together, then these campaigns won't be created. And if they are being created, they're going to be discussed and hopefully they won't be leaving the, the boardroom. And now lots of brands, luxury brands, such as Chanel and Gucci, have appointed diversity and inclusion directors to ensure that they are working with the marketing and comms team and that the thinking is joined up and holistic. So I can't stress this enough. Diversity and inclusion is always, again, it's sort of bolted on different aspects, but it's very much part of the CSR value. And it's important that CSR is understood within an organization. It's about real change. And once your CSR values are decided, you've got those four or five values and they're sitting at the heart of the brand and they're at the business strategy, then everyone is speaking from the same script and they're communicated bottom up, top to bottom, sideways, 
holistically every campaign is csr led not just a campaign you're working on but all campaigns all promotional materials everything's baked in within your business culture and everything's baked in with the processes and relationships and when you have them really understood within an organization when everyone's working together when everyone understands the csr values it boosts so much of a brand so much of a business and it it really is it can create um high return on investment because what it does is when you have csr it means you're you retaining employees you're attracting new talent you're attracting investors investors now want to see companies and brands have authentic csr baked into their business strategy why because these kinds of companies are low risk there's less chances of these companies being cancelled online um, when you are um, when you are really investing in your csr you're creating customer loyalty it gives your brand a competitive edge there's less chances of crisis management because everything is flowing seamlessly from your csr from your marketing you don't have to really work hard at your marketing because everyone is talking about you it creates a stronger brand and also you create the right relationships and the right partnerships in business and for the brand you create the right partnerships for your supply chain you don't have to work at it it's just effortless and millennials and we come to millennials and generation z and i'm not sure if you've heard of what we call now the Greta effect but Greta Thunberg is very much you know she's probably the 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 icon of this generation and this generation wants change this generation wants better from brands and from business and brands are waking up to this and if they want to engage with the next consumer or they want to attract the next talent the next the next best thing the big thing then they know that they really have to invest in authentic corporate social responsibility. Companies now are being called out um, when they are just paying lip service to CSR. And this generation is not afraid to call out brands. This generation is not afraid to use social media to cancel. Brands need to really have this mind shift, this thinking to put CSR at the heart of its business strategy and at the heart of the brand. And that's a kind of a refrain that I'm gonna keep sort of talking about and mentioning. And then we have brands that are doing it right. Lego, I love Lego. And um, Lego is one of the, I mean, it's won so many awards for its corporate social responsibility, its sustainability. I'm not sure if you're aware, but the little Lego pieces are now made out of sustainable sugar cane. So they are bio biodegradable uh, pieces. And during lockdown, uh, when we were all sort of various stages of not being able to go anywhere, one thing that did we did sort of buy a lot of is Lego. And this year, there's a great story. Earlier this year, Lego decided with all the profits that it made last year, it was going to give all its staff a bonus. Now, this isn't a story that um, Lego promoted. This is a story that its employees were talking about. And that's how this story got traction and everyone was talking about it. So Lego gave all its employees um, a bonus. And they also said to their employees, we're really going to look after you because you looked after Lego. And we're going to really look after your well-being." So it comes back to this corporate social responsibility. Ben and Jerry's is another one an ice cream brand american and the interesting thing about ben and jerry's and i'm not sure if you will remember but in 2020 that's when we had the rise of black lives matter and a lot of brands jumped on the bandwagon of black lives matter and you know made these very empty statements but ben and jerry's we're the only brand that's actually been working on diversity and inclusion for a long time. They really put diversity and inclusion at the heart of their brand. So when lots of brands were called out for just kind of 
whitewashing on Black Lives Matter, Ben and Jerry's was the brand that um, was able to say very strongly, we've always been committed to this to this issue. And another brand I really love is called Glossier. And uh, Glossier is a makeup brand. And what's really unusual about them is they've now become a very successful brand, but they started online. They've never done any advertising, any big marketing campaigns. All Glossier did was create a, a sustainable brand, an ethical, purpose-led brand, and made sure that their brand was diverse and inclusive with the products it created, that it, um, it, uh, it's a brand that speaks to different ethnic uh, groups and no social influences for Glossier. They just did what they, you know, they did uh, what they do really well. And their customers and their consumers started to talk about them on social media because they were authentic, they were sustainable, and they were diverse. And they just spoke to their consumer. And that's how the Glossier brand has, has evolved, is through social media, is through marketing, um, but not, not, a, not a campaign as we would know as a campaign, just by doing the right thing, just by work, knowing what their CSR values are. And other brands that I think that are doing great things and ones that I would like to mention. Again, it's another beauty brand and that's called Lush. Um, so you might have you might have heard of Lush uh, Fresh Handmade Cosmetics. And Lush has set itself aside from its competitors because it sees itself as a campaigning brand first and a cosmetics brand second. And I think that's really interesting. And what that means is, and what the brand actually says in its statement, which is this, creating a cosmetics revolution to save the planet. And this is also, the, the brand just doesn't make these empty statements. It stands by these statements. It's built into the business strategy. It's built into the heart of the brand. and the brand is communicating this across all its social media channels and when again they're one of the few brands that were really campaigning for black lives matter diversity and inclusion way before uh, the black lives matter movement start really came into the furore in uh, 2020 and also lush is a brand that's been really active and fighting against fossil fuels, which is now another big um, issue for brands. Another good example is uh, Superdrug. And Superdrug recently launched, uh, which was um, in 2020, launched its first ever CSR report. And it is committed, it says now, it's really committed to sustainability, a new sustainability program. And it's becoming recognized now for being an ethical brand. So Superdrug has put a lot of thought into this. Um, and brands are, you know, brands that are doing it well haven't just jumped on a bandwagon. Brands that are doing it, doing CSR well, have really thought about what their passions are, what their values are, and worked and made sure that everybody within the organization understands what they're what they're doing what they're about and then of course there are brands who get it wrong and who've done wrong and we learn a lot from uh, the mistakes we make we also make learn a lot from the mistakes others make boohoo.com is a fast fashion um, label and you might recall in 2020 at the start of the pandemic, when we went into the first lockdown here in the UK in March, boohoo.com was actually called out for how it was treating its staff and that a lot of its uh, staff in, the, um, in its manufacturing warehouses weren't socially distanced, weren't even being paid the minimum wage. And strangely enough, 
I mean, boohoo.com had its sustainability report that it issued in 2019, but yet it wasn't doing the right thing. It was just paying lip service. It was just greenwashing. And boohoo.com was called out for this. It shares did plummet. Um, and uh, there was a lot of outcry about what they were doing. Another brand who got it wrong, and this is a brand I love, and I was really surprised that Oatly, which is um, an oat, it's a vegan milk, it's a brand that started out with CSR at the heart of its brand, but somehow it's lost its way. In my opinion, it's it's not really kept on its path. It's it's tried to overcomplicate things, promise things it can't deliver on, and as a result has been recently called out for greenwashing. And um, it recently did an ad and um, the, the um, Advertising Agency Authority called out Oakley for misleading on its environmental claims and credentials. And that's really sad. And now we're seeing lots of brands that started out really well on their CSR but have have just lost their way because they've not really built it into their into their brand. They've not built in those values into the business strategy. Other um, sort of fails. I don't know whether you remember, but McDonald's, the fast food um, chain, had uh, decided it was going to get onto um, the bandwagon of um, reducing its plastic. So McDonald's used to have plastic straws. And then it decided it was going to have paper straws, which in theory, which would, would be great. But um, it found that they could not actually recycle the paper straws. So again, it was um, something that they jumped on, uh, didn't really think it through, didn't really understand how it's going to work for the brand. And it was a marketing campaign that failed. Another one is Volkswagen, and this is where uh, a brand has lied to its consumer, and um, it's never really been able to recover that trust issue. So Volkswagen, Volkswagen the car um, manufacturer, admitted it had equipped 11 million of its diesel cars with software that could be used to cheat on emission tests while marketing the vehicles as clean diesel and it kind of this this statement goes back to you know when i when i talked about marketeers having a mindset a shift in in thought and we as marketeers and people within the comms industry have to really become ambassadors um and really do our research and know what we're talking about with corporate social responsibility if you want to do csr right you've you've got to do your research you've got to learn about csr you've got to learn about what's happening with the planet you've got to learn about the resources what are the issues what are the challenges um you can't just bolt it on because that when you bolt it on that's when it fails that's when things just go miserably wrong and you're having crisis management and um, brands are called out. So I didn't want to just stay with the negative. Um, I wanted to also talk about um, and leave you with a positive. And I saw this ad um, about two weeks ago and I loved it. And I thought, oh, next day when I'm back on the tube, I'm going to take a photo of this ad. So when I went back, the way I was traveling, the ad wasn't there anymore. So I had to hunt this down. Keone is a really interesting brand and I didn't know a lot about it until I actually saw this ad which spoke to me. And Keone is the biggest travel company uh, that, that came out of Switzerland and it arrived in the UK in 1965. But I think this ad says everything to me and, and hopefully to you and it's this line i want to just read out by staying true to our values we pulled together and did the right thing by our customers because valuing individuals and relationships has been key to our success since 1906 
And I think that just sums up everything that I've been trying to communicate through this webinar with you. And what's also really interesting about this brand is that it, if you go onto its website, it really talks about its CSR values, what it's doing on sustainability. And it talks about responsible travel, which is, you know, we know travel is not easy, trying to have green travel, trying because when you are traveling, you are increasing your carbon footprint. But it's trying to offset it in other ways and still keep the trust at the heart of the brand. And the other thing Keone says is that it respects people, the planet and animals. And also what they do is they partner with hotels around the world who have signed up to their responsible promise. And I think this goes back to when I was saying when you're working ethically with a brand, when you have your CSR values baked in, you automatically make the right partnerships, you create the right supply chains, you you attract the right influencers for your campaigns. It just works really well. Um, and as a result, Keone has won lots of awards for what it's doing. I mean, that wasn't its that wasn't its mission when it put CSR at the, the the heart of its brand. It wasn't to win awards. It was just to be an ethical brand. And that's the thing when you are really genuine about your corporate social responsibility. When you're not doing it for the the spin or the PR, it works so much better because others will start talking about all the fabulous things you're doing. Your customers will start talking about you. And importantly, your workforce, your colleagues, your employees will start talking about the brand that they're working for. So corporate social responsibility isn't just a sort of a, a good feel uh, phenomenon. It's, it's, so, it's so much more than that. And that's what I really wanted to leave you with. And I thought this Keone, um, while it talks of uh, the promise of holidays, it also just talks about their value, which is trust. And we're living in a time now where trust is so important and trust is so, it's so valuable. It's, they say data is gold, but I think trust now is almost, um, it has a great value for a brand. Thanks very much, Sangeeta. A really insightful presentation on a topic that's become very key in recent years. So before we head into the Q&A session with Sangeeta, I'd just like to give you a little bit of information about CIM's new Level 6 Diploma, which is in Sustainable Marketing, which will be available from the July 2022 submission period and see CIM partner with the Carbon Literacy Trust. It's been designed with a panel of sustainability and marketing experts from both academic and practitioner backgrounds to enable marketers to explore concepts of sustainability and to better understand how to embed these to create long-term value for your organization. Existing holders of the CIM Diploma in Professional Marketing can gain the additional qualification by taking the sustainability module and you can find further information about this on the qualifications page on the CIM website. We also have the Sustainable Transformation Hub, which has some brilliant resources, including blogs, podcasts and webinars for you to access and links to some of our training courses delivered by marketing specialists in sustainability. So we'll go to our questions now. Um, first question, um, it's, it's more of a, a comment on the, the Lego thing, which I, I didn't realise they were made from um, different products now. Um, but the question is, could could there be an allegation um, that there's been made that um, they may be simply greenwashing by using bioplastics rather than recycling waste plastic? Um, apparently, it's sugarcane plastic may not come from fossil fuels, but it's produced through farming that uses up a lot of resources. Um, you know, could could there be that allegation, or is it um, a step in the right direction that they've made? Oh, that's a really interesting question, and you know. The thing with Lego um, now creating its pieces from sustainable bio biodegradable uh, sugar cane is that it's a step in the right direction. And, and Lego it has, has said that this is just a step. It's constantly innovating. It's constantly wants to do better by the yeah. planet. And it's been it's this isn't just um, something it's done in the last couple of years. Lego's really focused on its corporate social responsibility. It's been doing it for a long time. And 
it's constantly innovating to make its product better for the planet. Uh, they're also doing recycling schemes where instead of just throwing your Lego away, you can take it in and recycle it, upcycle. Um, so they're doing so many different things um, and th they're not just stopping here. They want to continue to do better. Thank you. Um, next question, um, comment from the, the questioner is um, a lot of the examples that you gave were B2C focused. How would you say the best way to get started would be for a B2B company? Um, I would say is to really understand what's your what are you trying to do in your business? What's the main objective of your business? And you you know it depends again how big your how big you are. If you're a small business, if it's just you on your own, um, find out what your passion is and what and even if it's not five things that you could put as your CSR value, if it's just one thing, but to do that one thing really well. That's important. It's to just it's to define the one value that you can do really well and put it at the heart of your business strategy. And that way you can deliver on it. And then in time you can grow you can grow the values, you can in increase the values to maybe two or three. But it's first of all finding out what's the objectives of the company, finding out what the passion is and what can you deliver on. Right. So it's wider than just the marketing team, it's the whole business and the ethos oh, of the company. And that's the thing, and, and that's what I hope I got across, is that corporate social responsibility is a mind shift. It's it's a change of attitude for a brand, for a business, for a company. And it's got to come from the top and it's got to be sideways. It's got to, you know, feed up and, you know, top to toe. It, you can't just have one team or the marketing team championing CSR it's got to really then filter through the rest of the organization otherwise it won't work because you'll have colleagues doing other things that are not CSR led yeah of course um, next question um, you mentioned about companies such as Oatly who make a great start sometimes losing their way do you mm -hmm. think this is down to struggling to make CSR communication stand out in comparison to other brands and what would you say is the best way to do this? Ah, oh, that's a really good question. Um, I don't know why Oakley's lost its way. Um, I think, yes, you know, it's a competitive market. And when you try to compete um, and, you, you know, you're going to compromise uh, your marketing, you're going to compromise your brand. Uh, brands that really are not trying to compete, they're just doing the right thing because they know that, they they whatever they're doing they're doing really well they're not trying to over promise those brands such as glossier um have less risk involved with them i mean the, uh, another brand that has recently been called out is um innocence uh which again started like oakley a good brand doing good things by the planet but recently it was called out for an ad um where they said that you know, Oakley products are in plastic um, bottles and um, plastic campaigning groups called out innocent drinks um, because they said it wasn't really championing um, or doing right by by the planet because of their, their pl plastic. Brands, I think, are losing the way and the, and the way they can get back is just to go back to what they're, again, what's their objectives? What are they trying to do? Look at their values and make sure those values are back within the business strategy, are back within the, the heart of the brand. And then it's it's re, you know, re-looking at themselves. Um, and it's a shame because these brands have done so well. Um, next question, how would an organization choose the best fit for CSR? I suppose that's deciding what your five key points are. How would they decide in, in that? Uh, the organization has to come together so you need uh, a conversation everyone has to be part of that conversation it can't just be the ceo saying this is what it is it's got to be joint it's got to be a big powwow with everyone everyone feeds in um, and finds out what their core values are uh, so everyone can buy into it everyone can feel you know this is something that they believe in something they trust in and then you create your values that's the first starting point 
is that everyone is involved in that conversation. Right. And then and the sort of a similar link question someone has is um, the question that they have in their mind is that who should be more accountable and the one to initiate CSR if it's not at all a practice in an organisation? Um, that's a really good question. If you want to drive uh, corporate social responsibility, then and it's not coming from the top, then you as employees, um, you know, you need to you need to get the buy in from your other colleagues, from your other departments and take your corporate social responsibility uh, agenda to uh, management and get them to see the business benefits. That's, you know, CEOs, um, they always want to see, want to know what's the ROI. Well, the ROI is when you're doing corporate social responsibility well, you're spending less on your PR you're spending less on any kind of crisis management, you're retaining staff, you're attracting better talent, and these kinds of companies are far more profitable as well. Uh, they also attract investors. So there's a lot of business reasons why uh, CEOs should be doing corporate social responsibility and should really be embedding that into the business strategy. And sometimes CEOs, you know, need a bit of a, a wake up call sometimes um, and also need to understand, you know, going back to that Xeno Group survey, 77% of consumers want to see CEOs walk their talk and, you know, live by the brand. Um, and if brands want to evolve, if businesses want to endure, then they have to really change their mindset. Otherwise, they're going to be dinosaurs. They're not going to be able to exist. And we can see that now uh, just when we're, we're discussing or looking at um, well-being of employees, those um, brands and organisations that are not committed to hybrid working, they, they will struggle. Yes. Yeah, I think we've seen that with quite a few organisations. I mean, next question is, um, will corporate sponsorship fade away as companies turn to do their own CSR? Well, that's a really good question. And, you know, the companies that are that have really strong CSR um, and if they are being bought by another organisation, well, first of all, you find that these companies that are really strong in their corporate social responsibility don't just compromise and they don't just sell out. If they happen to be in bed with a with a partner that isn't CSR led, um, those companies will struggle because a they will they will not keep the talent in the in the, in the organization they've acquired because those employees are there for for a reason they believe in that brand and that brand won't stay on top of its game because you're changing the whole dynamic that brand is successful that the, this company whatever company buys it is because it, of its CSR is because it's purpose-led, is because it's ethical. If they try to change that, they're changing the whole chemistry and therefore the DNA of that company uh, won't exist anymore. And sometimes what you do find, and I can't think of any, um, I can't think of an example, but I have read when companies have been bought by, say, an ugly non-CSR company, they've actually influenced the com you know the holding company and um that company has changed its mindset so i don't know if that kind of answers it right okay um so when you're saying about the ethos of companies somebody's asking a question about a new brand how can they start off um by being ethical in the current climate um and with the current technology for messaging i mean for a new brand you've got a whole new exercise book um you know you're not is a to find your niche what is your what is your thing what's your the purpose of your business and what drives your passion and then what what is the one thing one commitment you want to make uh for the planet and just do that one thing really well um and it will just flow and it's a bit like glossier it decided it was going to be an ethical sustainable makeup brand from start to finish from its packaging from its messaging from it from the brand being diverse and inclusive and that's how it started it started really small but it it was committed to its ethical and sustainable um products and 
from that it grew and it and its social media just grew from that so if you're a new brand just think of what the purpose is that you want to be what's the objective that you want to achieve and what is it that you drives you as a business what's your passion and then those two things will work together it's nothing complicated and it doesn't have to be four values it can just be the one value but do that one value really really well okay um the next question is how how could we looking in and um, see if a company is doing real csr brands that are doing doing uh, corporate social responsibility really honestly really ethically they'll be talking about it on their website because they they are they want to talk about all the good things they're doing uh, and they want to share what they're doing. So, for example, Keone that I mentioned in, in my presentation, you go onto their website, it's so easy to find out about the brand and what they're doing. So there are ways, do, do your research, go onto the website. Um, and I, if, I can't remember this um, platform, but when you type in the brand, it will tell you what their green listing is. And also now, you know, lots of organizations, um, you can go on and see the advertising agency authority. I think they've got a list of what what kind of green companies are there, what kind of uh, green brands there are. And there are lots of experts in this field as well. Ethical Consumer Magazine is a really good one. They're doing lots of, they do lots of lists um, regularly you know, the best denim brands, the best makeup brands, the best food brands. There's a lot out there. You just have to do a little bit of Google research. Right, okay. And the next question is, I suppose, when we're looking, put this in the context of um, global brands that we have now and the, the early slide that you showed about the, the statistic about more people have access to digital or a mobile phone than have to a toilet. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Are there, you know, is, if this is a global concept, are there certain countries around the world that are doing better on this issue or are there the people, you know, who are less fortunate, do they, are they still focused on CSR as well? Has that message spread around the world in different cultures? Yeah, interestingly, and that, that's a really good question, um, India is the first country in the world to have implemented a CSR law in 2014. Um, and that um, with this law, all companies um, in India, whether they're national or multinationals, um, have to give 2% of their profit to a um, not-for-profit or a foundation and to actually improve a local, wherever they're operating, improve the local community or give it to something which is going to uh, uplift vulnerable uh, people in society. So India's made big strides on that. And I think here in the West, we always think we've got a lot to teach the East, but I think we can learn a lot from countries like India. Also, France has done some fantastic work. France is uh, the first country um, in Europe, in the Western world. Well, actually, it's the first country in the world, I should go as far as saying, that created. Um, in last year uh, to say that any brands that were greenwashing, they could be fined. Uh, and so from that French law, we now have, um, we now have the um, Advertising Agency Authority here um, now looking at those kinds of powers. But France has done a lot in this with regards to corporate social responsibility, but India is the first country in the world to have a mandatory CSR law. Interesting. Um, so I think we've got time for one final question. Um, and as we've got a lot of majority of students, um, viewers who are listening to this um, presentation will be studying members or studying mm -hmm. at university. Do you think that in future business management courses and studies will start to incorporate CSR and sustainability or are they doing it already? I, mean, I know we've just mentioned our new qualification at CIM, but have you seen this happening um, in a wider context? Yes. And um, there are business um courses around the world that have now we are teaching corporate social responsibility and making sure the next generation of business leaders um, or people going out in the workforce have an understanding about corporate social responsibility also 
very interestingly what came out of COP26 uh, last year in Glasgow is that businesses, uh, governments around the world are recognising that businesses have a really important role to play with regards to sustainability and climate change and they are making sure that businesses are part of that around the table and a part of um of that agenda uh so yeah um business courses are adapting they they realize they need to have a change of mindset and now also to uh, with regards to marketing and public relations um universities are talking about sustainability they're talking about sustainable comms they're talking about corporate social responsibilities being you know before it wasn't given any respect now it's a it's a an element that is very much part uh of business management excellent that's very thanks sangeeta um so we've had some really good questions there from our viewers and it's a shame we've run out of time and couldn't get through more of the questions that have come in but thank you very much for answering the ones that you did some really great advice and hopefully some useful tips that our viewers can take away so sadly that's all we have time we have for our webinar this evening i'd like to say a big thank you to sangeeta for her excellent presentation and we do hope that you found it interesting and worthwhile We'll be back with our next Marketing Club webinar, The Values Economy, How to Deliver Purpose-Driven Service for Sustained Performance, which will be delivered by Alan Williams on Wednesday, the 23rd of March. You'll find further details listed on the events page on the website, where you can also register for the session. So on behalf of CIM, that just leaves me to thank Sangeeta once again for a fantastic presentation and to say thank you to you for joining us today. We hope you've enjoyed the session and we look forward to welcoming you again to our webinars in the future. Take care, everybody. Goodbye.